us pray right now. Gracious God, right now we come and thank you for another day. We thank you first and foremost for the freedom to worship. We thank you, Lord, for our celebration today of our pastor, 25 years in the ministry.
invitations and announcements and welcome our visitors who are here today. We have Bible study on Wednesday at 7 p.m. via Zoom. You can dial in via email to participate in the available on our church Facebook page if you see that information. Today is the day that we are celebrating our pastor today. Today's the day we have the Reverend Edward Allen with us. Yeah. His brother as the teacher. So we thank God for that. On this Saturday, yesterday, we had a great time. Great time. Uh, with the pre Thanksgiving luncheon for the seniors here in Summer. They were so grateful. Amen. It's just a blessing that we're doing with God. The bonus to you. Amen. Amen. Because a lot of people don't have what you have. But we got to share what we have. Amen. To help somebody. That's right. Amen. Amen. We continue to support our urban league of Union County, where it's the return of prisoners program. And it's very it's really important that we do donations of personal items such as deodorant, hairbrush, combs, toothpaste, toothbrushes, men and women's socks, undergarments and clothing. They're collected. We have Brother Donald Nichols here on third and fourth Sunday collects those items because people are coming out of incarceration and they don't have stuff. That's right. That's so right. we want to try to help them out. That's right. Some are have been locked up because of what they look like, and some could be self-inflicted. Mm. But it is our view as children of God. That's right. We can't judge anybody. That's right. right. But we can help everybody. Yeah. 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 Our sick and shut in. If you want to look up Sister Karina Allen, Sister Eva Andrews, Mary Ann Foster. Sister Martha Stewart, Brother Robert Stewart, Sister Essie Hopkins, Sheba Miles, and Stephen Rice. And we have people on our prayer request list, Marie Brown, Lisa Green, Kim Johnson, Anita Lowe, and Marjorie Stratford. We need to lift them up, send them a card, give them a call, pray for them. Yeah, because they may be shut in, but not shut out. That's right. Because we are the soldiers in the army of the Lord. And he's expecting us to use our ammunition to help folks. That's right. And so it's very important that we don't forget about people who are going through whatever they're going through. Right now, I would like to say that uh, Friday night was an awesome, awesome night. Brother, I was singing from his feet all the way down. Yeah. Just, just much power. Amen. I did a little something. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think God is good. Yes, he is. I, I was just overly blessed with the music. Yeah. Phenomenal. 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 So we are truly. Amen. It's actually our prayer time right now. Um, I'm going to let you do your scripture, then you come up. Okay, okay. And Sister Stephanie is doing that now. And uh, I am going to do the public prayer unless there was someone on the thing. Okay, great. So I will do the public prayer, and our musician is going to give us some kind of praise in him. That's right. This is an intercessory prayer. When we pray for those who are going through, pray for those who don't have, pray for those mothers, fathers, childs, things have happened. This prayer is not about you. Well, somebody in here may be praying for you. All right. Yeah. So it's important that we lift up our voices to the Lord within us as I pray for you publicly. Our choir will sing us a prayer again. And I'm just going to ask you to stand if you can. God knows if you can.
the hands of those who are out of the ark of safety. We're petitioning you for those who are going through bereavement, have lost a loved one. Comfort them, Lord. Yes. Comfort them in a mighty way. Have your way, Lord. We know that you already knew. Yes. We know that you God all by yourself. Yes. But we're just asking you to put your loving arms around us. Have your way, Lord. Lost no matter mother, sister, brother, wife, daughter, just touch them. Touch. Let them know you got them. Touch. In the palm of your hand. Yeah. Because we know you're able and we know you will. Yes. And we know you have the power to comfort us. Have your way, Lord. We're grateful for that, Lord. But I'm lifting up anyone who is homeless today. Yeah. Who's out in this cold weather. Have your way, Lord. And no one has offered them shelter. Yes. We know you are the shelter. We know you can comfort them. We know you can cover them. Yes. So Lord, I'm just asking right now. Right to now. Cover those people out there. Have your way. On the streets, no matter where they are. Yes. Someone perhaps thinks they are less than. But we know that you created us all equal in your hands. Have your way. And we need to see each other being equal in your hands. Yes. Because you didn't make any jump. So we're thankful today, yes. Lord, that you can actually cover those people who are out there in the cold right now. Lord, I lift up anybody going through addiction. Have your way, Lord. Many going through addiction. Yes. Because our world has been in turmoil for some time, but over the last three years, people are really having a hard time with anxiety just with trying to get through yes. what has happened in our world. I'm asking you right now. Right now. Let them know they can take your pill. Let them know they can drink Jesus' juice. Let them know that you're the best pill that they're going to take. First of all, you need to nudge them so they can seek your face. Nudge them so that they can believe in you well, and know that you can do all things. Yeah. Not just something, yeah. but you can do all things exceedingly well. Lord, well, I lift up every church that is open in your name. Have your way, Lord. Let them make sure that you're in it. Yes. Not the pastor. Not the preacher. Yes. Not the officer. Let them know that the church is all about praising you. Yes. We're not praising anybody else but you. Because yes. you deserve all the praise. You are God all by yourself. Yes. And you don't really need nobody else. Yes. But we know you like the praise. Wow. So we want to give you praise. We want to give you glory. We want to give you what you so rightfully deserve. But I ask you to continue to cover our schools throughout this world. Those shooters out there, Lord. Killing little children. Killing administrators. Killing staff members. And I don't even understand it. But Lord, I'm asking you right now. Let us go this way. As they sit and try to figure out who they want to kill today. Touch them, Lord. Touch them. Let them get a little Holy Ghost power. Touch. Let them realize that you're God. Touch. And you really don't need to be helped by anybody else. But you want us to spread love. Yeah. Help them spread love. Right now. Help them understand that they can put the guns down. Right now. Pick up the Bible. Yeah. Get some good feeling in their souls, okay. in their hearts, and in their minds. We need you today, Lord. We need you in a mighty way. Yeah. Lord, I lift up our pastor and his wife and family today. Just ask you to keep on blessing them. Keep on allowing them to do what it is you have called for them to do. Lord, we want to thank you for our pastor, first lady, and the other family members. We just thank you today for keeping them here 25 years. That's a long time. But you've kept them. So we're thankful today for all that you have done yeah. and all that you are doing. And we lift up all the hands for what you're going to do. Yeah. No matter what the newspapers say, no matter what the world is saying, yeah. we know you have the last word. So we're thanking you right now for being God. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
I am to celebrate Pastor's 25th anniversary. We thank you all for coming out. Um, we appreciate you being here, and we hope that you are planning to have a wonderful time with us today. We want you to praise the Lord. We want you to sing. We want you to shout. And we want you to have a good time with us today. So I hope you came out to worship, because that's what we're all going to do here today. So be prepared and be excited. Amen. And thank you, Pastor, for 25 years of Amen. guiding us and being our shepherd, and we appreciate and love you. First Lady, you already know how we all feel about you, but you know especially me. I love you more than life itself. So I thank you all, and thank you all for coming out to help us celebrate that. Thank you, Sister Tony. I'm now going to just backtrack, and I'm going to ask you to open your hymnals to selection number 599. The Christian Minister.
will affect us all to keep the path with you all these years. We know that you have the faith in that hour. Hallelujah.
and the faithfulness that you all executed across the years. Amen. My thanks to Reverend Dean for her kind, generous introduction. I know her to be a truth teller. <laughs> She wasn't joking about the good looking stuff. And Reverend Dean, your check will be in the mail. I'm so very glad to be here with you. But after you pass your 70th birthday, you're glad to be here. So I was I was journeying here early and I experienced what I would have never believed here in Southern. I live in Jersey City. I, I believe it there as I turned on Chapel Street to get to Morris over by the pizza place. I, I encountered a woman, she was well dressed, looking like maybe she was coming to Pilgrim. But she was shouting something at a guy who was up against the wall of the pizza park. And I was a little concerned because she was an older woman and he a younger guy. But about that time, some of the police rolled up and so my curiosity was now at least protected. <laughs> so I stopped and I listened. The woman is sh shouting at the guy. The police officer went up to him and said to him something. And then I heard the question. He, he asked him, why are you up against this wall with your hands up? And the fellow said, I am a robber. I'm a thief. I have mugged old ladies. He said, but I'm not a fool. This lady is shouting at me. Acts 238. She's got an axe and 238. <laughs> said, I just couldn't get Jonah doesn't go to heaven. The little 
Everybody said, well, when you get to heaven, you will. <laughs> God 
designed us to make a difference with our lives. Ephesians 2.10 God has created us for a life of good deeds which he has already prepared for us to do. 1 John 3.14 Our love, our love for each other proves that we have gone from death mm, to life. Right. That's right, that's right. So, some years ago, I, I was watching a talk show and the host brought on one of his guests who was a bodybuilder and as the guest was introduced and came out, he, 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 he flexed, made his moves, the audience applauded. So now the host said, how do you use all those muscles? Stood up again. Flex, showed his biceps, his triceps. Audience still impressed, he sat down. Talk to him, said to him again. Now that you've got all those muscles. Come on, preacher. Come on, I hear you. What do you do with them? Yeah, yeah. Bodybuilder was perplexed, confused. I believe even embarrassed and dismayed. Mm. He didn't have an answer for the question. He didn't know what else he should do with it. You and I have been developed. We have a gift. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are using it. That's right. Church, the value of Christianity is more than for a show. We've got to be more than spectators. That's right. We've been created by Christ to make a difference. God has given each of us talents to be used to make a difference. Yeah, yeah. How do we make a difference? Mm -hmm. How do we use the muscle talent God has given us? That's right. That's the question. Yeah. Jesus answered it for his disciples one day when they began to ask him, Lord, can I sit on your right side? The other said, can I sit on the left? They wanted to be important. <clears throat> they wanted to look like they had value. Mm. But they misunderstood what it would entail to be a true disciple. They felt that they could make a difference by being valuable to Christ. And they wanted to do so by position. You know? They thought to themselves, if only when they looked at Jesus, they saw us on his right side or his left side, everybody would know how important we are. Come on, preacher. Come on, come on. God is not looking for us to take positions. The lesson Jesus taught them is an important lesson for every Christian to learn. Jesus taught them it's not who you are. 
for how powerful you are, but rather, how open are you to servanthood? That's right, that's right, that's right. That's right. In fact, God deliberately doesn't choose the powerful to orchestrate his will. All right. Simply put, God is never dependent on a man or a woman's ability in order to be used in his master plan. That's right, that's right, that's right. You see, stuttering Moses was never scheduled to enter into an orator's contest. And had he, his lack of elocution would have defeated him. Come on, preacher. Come on. But Moses, because he made himself available to recite the words of God, stood before Pharaoh and said, let my people go. That's right. That's right. That's right. And Israel's bondage was broken. All right. God did not depend on David who had no military training. Come on, preacher. Come on now. Uh, he had a few fights with lions and bears. <laughs> Yet when he availed himself to do the will of God, and Saul offered him his armor, David discovered what you and I should discover, that what fits somebody else does not necessarily fit you. We must use what God has given us if we are to make a difference against our Goliaths. Reach up in here, reach up in here. Beyond the personal embarrassment of a woman who was a prostitute. Come on, preacher, tell us. Jose is called to marry her. Hmm. Yet we are allowed to see the response of Jose. That we might see what a faithful husband is to an unfaithful wife. Come on, come on, preach. Jose is used by God to demonstrate God's faithfulness when we decide we don't have to be faithful in him. Come on, preacher, come on, come on. Now, Jacob was a liar, <laughs> a deceiver, yeah. a trickster, yeah. and most insecure. But God used Jacob. That's right. That's right. Who depicts power and grace as a result of change and renewal. Come on. David was not chosen as the king of Israel because he was handsome. David was not an aged sage. No. As a matter of fact, David was a luster. That's right. And a fornicator. That's right. Tell us and that. a conspirator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But God chose David because he saw that David's heart was good. Come on, preacher. Come on. Come on. And every good thing that David did was because he desired to love. Yeah. And to please God. That's right. David's desires was to love God and serve God's people. All right. You may have talent and skill, but if you don't love the Lord, come on, come on. Nothing you do will amount to anything. Come on, preacher. Come on. Come on. Come on. The record records in the scriptures. It tells us that by the world's standards, Solomon was a rich and powerful man. That's right. It would have been easy to idolize Solomon. Mm -hmm. 
his wealth, his accomplishments, his temple building skills were a tribute to his vision. His writing of the Proverbs and Psalms are a reflection of his closeness to the Spirit of God. But a close look at Solomon, All right. we see that Solomon had a difficult and troubled life. He had the roots of his father's dark side. Mm. Solomon's mother was married to another man when her adulterous behavior brought about Solomon's birth. Well, but the fact is that God loved Solomon. That's right. And the Bible teaches us that God took a look at Solomon and decided that he would make him the wisest of men. All right, all right. We learned from Solomon that God does not hold us accountable for the sins of our fathers. All right, Christian, come on. Come on. Abraham. <laughs> Too old to think that he would ever be called father and dad. After all, Viagra hasn't been in bed. <laughs> but because Abraham was obedient, that's right. That's right. When, when God told him to go, God suspended the age uh, imposed impotency. Mm -hmm. And when we do what God wants us to do. That's right. That's right. When we go where God wants us to go, come on, preacher. Our physical weaknesses will never uh, hinder our performance. That's right. That's right. That's right. David was too small and young, I tell you, to be the king of Israel. You may be overlooked. You may even be underestimated. Well by the world you live in. Wow. But just do what God tells you to do. That's right, that's right. And you'll be just right for his work. Yeah, 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 yeah. With Timothy, it was true he suffered with ulcers and was afflicted in his stomach. Timothy was timid. But it didn't stop him. His prescription for that condition he had in his stomach was not Johnny Walker Black of the Fields. Come on, preacher. But 1 Timothy 5 and 23 says that Timothy was told to take a little wine. All right. Sometimes sickness is in the will of God for a Christian. That's right, that's right. The very thing that makes another drunk may bring you healing. All right. Yeah. Come on, preacher. Because in spite of Timothy's illnesses, well, Timothy was available to Paul for God. Come on, preacher. And in life, from it says, that Timothy had a good reputation. His afflictions didn't stop him from being a troubleshooter for Paul and Asia Mike. That's right, that's right. Joseph, though he had a coat of many colors, was abused. That's right. Noah, a fine boat builder. Come on. But he was a drunk in an exhibition. Come on, preacher. Come on. Peter. Was a hothead yeah. and a fighter. Yeah. Yet it was upon the understanding that Peter held as to who Jesus is that Jesus declared, Pilgrim upon this rock, I build my church. Come on, preacher. Come on. And the gates of hell will not prevail against me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lazarus was dead. Come on, preacher. In the grave and stinking. Yeah. And in his death, we're told that Jesus is the resurrection yeah. and the life. Yeah. John was self-righteous. Come on. Naomi was a widow. Yeah. Leah was an unattractive gal. Gideon was poor. Yeah. And Samson was strong. Yeah. But he couldn't hold a secret. Yeah. Rahab was involved. Elijah was suicidal. 
Jeremiah was Come on, son. John the Baptist was an eccentric. Yeah. And Martha was a worried woman. Yeah. Uh, the Samaritan woman had several failed marriages. Come on, Bridget. If she was ever married to any of them. Come on, Bridget. Come on, man. Come on, man. Zacchaeus was unpopular. Yeah. Thomas was a doubter. Come on. Saul Paul was in poor health. Yeah. Jonah was a coward and a cop out uh, and a runaway. Come on, preacher. Yeah. Come, come on, on preacher. Yeah. With all the faults of each of them, yeah. God used them. Used them. I stop my shoulder.
whether it was in your family or around the congregation, did not sway you from your course. I I say, you've been back. Liars didn't lessen your determination. All right. You've been back. And you've been available. Church didn't have to look for you. Friends in the ministry could depend on you. Distance did not delay you. Weather did not prevent you. You've been fat. You've been available. You've been available for those marriages, for the counseling, for the dedications. The Goliaths didn't scare you. The politicians couldn't buy you. Lust didn't lame you. You've been available for the old and the young. You've been back. Ah. You've been available without regard at times for your own good. You've been back. Yeah, yeah. T, you, you've been true. Yeah. You've been trustworthy. You've been tactful. To be the pastor of Pilgrim 25 years, well. you've been back. Yeah. 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 You may have worn some fine tailor made clothes, yeah. but the garment of pastor that you wore has been tailor made well, yeah, yeah. for you. Yeah. T, you've been fat. Come on, come on. You've been talented. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been tasteful. Yeah, yeah. Pastor, you were designed to make a difference in the lives of the people of God. Well. Unlike Moses, you didn't try to avoid an encounter with your pharaohs. Well, unlike Jonah, come on, come you on. didn't run from your Nineveh summit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because you chose to live back, mm. you've been changing lives. Well, that is how we say it. You made a difference. You weren't out trying to make yourself important or powerful. Just wanted to make a difference. Yeah, yeah. So Reverend Ron, mm-hmm. you've been making a difference. Come on, yeah. come on. Because you know what the difference is that the cross made you. Yeah, yeah. And because of that, keep making a difference. Yeah, wow. yeah. Your life has made a difference. And I stopped by this morning to say to my friend, my brother, Pastor, stay fat. Yeah. Stay faithful. Stay available. Stay true. For Christ and his people. Yeah. You may never get rich in houses and land. Come on. But there's been a mansion. Deeded to you. Well, you may not dress every day in pretty selling suits. There's a long white road.
what it is that God wants of you. He doesn't want your money. He doesn't need your degrees. He doesn't care what kind of car you drive or if you drive one at all. He's looking for you. And if you give yourself to him, he'll use you. Yes, he will. Is there one? Yes. Somebody will come and heal. preacher. Now normally, normally we don't, we don't do uh, love offerings, but this morning we're going to do a love offering. And uh, we want to thank Pastor. We can't pay Pastor, but we can thank him for what he's given us in that word. That word was for all of us. And so I, I'm going to have uh, Jesse and Jordan come here. Train them while they're young. My, my weekly riding buddies. I don't know if they torment me more than I torment them on the way to school. Uh, but we're just going to ask for nipples. If you could just give us something. Everybody just stand. Come from the back to the rear. Give us God has so blessed you. And uh, we will do this and then get back to it. Stand, just come from the rear to the wall, come around.
for your generosity. So I think there's in case someone in the audience I know that Sister Jennifer Reverend D we're going to be called up after everybody else.
two, this is my first one, this is from the senior usher board. As you know, the first lady, she's really one. And she is, we added her to our usher board. Yes. She is an honorary usher. Because we come out here, any time that you're missing, mm -hmm. she makes up. And we do appreciate you, love you for all you do. You are, God, we thank God for you here at two. Thank you. It doesn't seem like 25 years. Yeah. someone to talk to. I call this woman and she shows up. There's not two better people that you want around in your life that actually loves you unconditionally regardless if you're a church member or not. Amen. People need to understand he's not perfect. She's not perfect. We're not perfect. We make mistakes. We have our flaws. But as long as you love purely from your heart, then we can feel the true love inside of you. Amen. Amen. And I just want to thank you. Because you know what I just went through. Amen. Several are rough at times. But I'm so thankful that you showed up. Thank you. you didn't ask for anything. You didn't expect anything. But you two sent me love. You saw my family love. And I appreciate you more than anything there is. And I'm just so happy.
Amen. Thank you. I know that I can depend on you. You've always been in my corner. I mean, my family, I, let me tell you, church, this, my family, I am so blessed. blessed. That's all I can say. I am so blessed. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh-oh, the twins. <laughs> all praise is unto the Lord on this celebration of 25 years. For my youngest brother and my youngest sister, I thank you for being a part of Edwards and I and our family life. But on behalf of the Following the Missionary Baptist Church, we would like to make a presentation to you from our family and from the church. God bless. <laughs> I would be remiss if I didn't say anything. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> baby. <laughs> to Uncle Ronald and Aunt Karen, on behalf of my family, we are not blood, but we are blood. Amen. Uncle Edward, Aunt Joyce, Aunt Doris, Aunt Cynthia, Joey, and my auntie over there, um, Pumpkin, these are my aunts and uncles. If no one knows, I call Uncle Ronald. All the time. Cousin Tommy, Aunt Sharon, and I cry. And I am not, you know, ashamed of that because <laughs> Uncle Ronald is my second father. Um, and I'm going to go lie these last years. And when there is nowhere to go, when I said prayer doesn't work for me, I can call Ronald. And we thought we were both in it together. <laughs> You're not going to do this, but do that. And he regulates me, and I can't thank him enough. And I'm sharing sweet soul. It is one like no other. And I look to that. And I look to Aunt Doris and the comments that the two of you bring. And me and my sister cousin, Jeannie, and Alexis. We're like three peas in a pod. That's right. And um, it just makes me feel so welcome. And I love you guys. Love, love you too. Do we have anyone else in the congregation who wants to come up? <laughs> the sun. <laughs> you know, I I know that this is a time to say our thanks and our gratitude to our pastor and our first lady. But I do want to say this. <clears throat> I don't know, well, I do know, I know that you know how great of a blessing we have in our pastor and in our first lady. Over the last two and a half years, during the pandemic, during COVID, our pastor not only found a way to broadcast to those who were stuck at home and couldn't come out, broadcasting from his very own dining room, him and First Lady, and putting together a production in short-term notice. But when the, when the opportunity came that we could gather in some shape or form, he went out and built a structure in the back of the church. Amen. And put it together, and I know because I'm sticking with it, I'm doing it, and figured out, and got together, and got a sound system, and put everything together then. Then when they said that we could come back into the building, 
he can, you know, he contacted all of his friends that worked throughout the state, got information, and stayed on the phone with them constantly, and found out what protocols needed to be in place for us to come back into our place of worship. When a lot of churches were still refusing, he knew how important it was for us to be back in this building yeah, and yeah. together. Yeah. And this Sunday, he comes in, he sanitizes the building before everybody gets here and sanitizes after everyone is left, after he has preached so hard. So I want to remind Pilgrim of how great a man we have in our pastor Amen. and how great of a woman we have in our first lady because she has been there by his side through every single step of it. Whenever he has asked of her, she has done it. And every time that any one of us have needed help, they have been there for us. And, and I can honestly say, not just because I'm their son, but because they raised me in such a way that I can not only turn to them as my mother and father, but as my spiritual advisors. And through all the things that I have been through, they've been there for me. They've been there for my life. They've been there for my children. And not only that, but they've been there for all of us and all of our children and grandchildren. And so I want to say thank you so much thank you. for being not only great parents, but a great pastor, a rich lady, but also being the rock that has kept this together in a time when a lot of churches have fallen apart. Let's be real. And so on that note, I say to Pilgrim, we need to continue to show up for our pastor yeah. and our first lady, yeah. the way they show up for us. And that's not just the people in the building, but those of us that have gone astray. Yes, pastor is probably going to say something to you, but it's because he loves you. It's because he misses you. It's not about anything other than that. There is no judgment. There is no, no anger. There is no anything other than the fact that I know that they miss you. Pilgrim is a give and take. It's an ebb and flow. And, and our pastor needs us to be there for him. So we need to continue to be there. We need to show up whatever time it may be. I don't even show up on time all the time. Myself. I'll be honest. I'm going to be honest because I know our pastor is honest. But we've got to be here. Pilgrim works because we're a family. Yeah. I've been here 25 years ago. There are so many people that if we look around, that if we tried to call them on their phones to come, they can't. Names that if we called out, we would not hear their voices. And, and the sad part is it's young and old that we have lost. But remember something. This is our home. I don't like seeing the empty seats. Amen. Not because of anything other than you are my family Amen. and I want to see you. So thank you, Pilgrim, for all the support you have given me for all this 25 years. I started off as just a little kid here and now I'm a deacon in this church Amen. and you have supported Amen. me through that journey. Amen. So thank you, Pilgrim, very much. Again, thank you. Thank you. Reverend Dean, thank you so much as well. You've always been a great, great friend to me as well, and always looked out for me. And to the great preacher of the hour, thank you so much. Always a blessing to hear from you. Thank you again. church. I have 101 different things and programs going on outside of the church. These are two people when we go down to Penn Station to feed the homeless. Mm -hmm. This church shows up and close sister Sharon goes out of her way to donate, to cook food, to bring it. She will never say no. When I need folks to go like yesterday, I had to pick up. They told me they only had 20 turkeys for my patients and 20 baskets. I couldn't get a ride. I reached out to a few people. Everybody was busy. The person that was supposed to take me, something happened in his family. I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And someone kept telling me, call the pastor. And I was like, he might have something to do. 
I called to him that Friday night, and he was like, what time do you need me? And when he always shows up. They both show up for me. Amen. And outside. Amen. And I've been with this church for, I didn't join right away. I came up here 15 years ago. I think I joined in maybe my second or third year here. This is a church who truly, when we go to Penn Station, they call us the cooking church. Because they think that we cook. Okay. But. There's love in this church. There's the word of God in this church. There's Reverend Dean when he is not here. Um, this church has truly been a blessing to me. And it is like Ronald said, it's a family. Amen. You know, this church doesn't, they lead by example. The whole group of us, including the sister Shep, they lead by example. And they make you feel welcome. And if you don't know, you have a church that you don't feel welcome in, then come on and deal with it. Amen. 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 People have said, I go way back for Pilgrim. Yes, Deacon Brooks and them would come down and they would come. I was homeless at one time. They would come down and say, Would you like to go to church? I said, Yes. I first said, Well, how long would you go? Is it going to be? It's going to be all day. <laughs> but I've learned. In my travels and even in this church, once the Holy Spirit is moving, there is no time left. There is no time left. From the prophecies that I received from this church, I finally found a place of refuge. I have affordable housing. Amen. Praying, preaching, teaching, church. You can come, there's no discrimination, there's no bickering, there's no whispering, there's no not wanting to be near because you might smell a certain way or you might look a certain way. Okay. The word said, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. And this is what Pilgrim has given me. Amen. Okay? All I can say is it works for me. <laughs>
25 years is a very long time. Amen. And yet, when the grace of God is with you, it seems like just yesterday. Yeah, yeah. I want to, again, say congratulations. Brother Phil Flood wants to send you oh, some amen. congratulations. Amen. Our church family wants to send you some congratulations. Amen. All the money I got left, I, I want to give you some congratulations. <laughs> Now that I'm close with the, both of you, yeah. you kind of fat too. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to be fat a little love from me to you and them. just say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's what the pastor said in this message. God put this together. And what God has put together, no man can take apart. And so I'm grateful that God took a chance on me to be here um, for all of those saints that have gone on. All of the stories that were embedded in me by them about this church and how it was brought about and all that it went through to get to this place. And so it's a work in progress. It continues to be a work in progress that as we watch the saints, those of old, move on, we've got to open the doors so that the younger can come in, that the house of God can be full and the people of God can be full with its work. Um, let me just say, my brothers and my sisters will tell you, our parents were working church people. Amen. Amen. So, when it got to a point and we were back in and people were coming, it wasn't nothing for me to set the communion table up. All right. Because oh, my mother used to yeah. sit and iron communion yeah. covers. <laughs> and all, I never... Didn't make any sense then, but we watched and we saw. To be able to do whatever I was given to do was by the by the power of God. And so, whatever He has in store for us, it's about us being available for Him. And so, I, I'm I'm always open. I'm always willing. If God sends me, that's what I started out as my objective. Here am I, send me. I don't want you to send anybody else before you send me. I'm like God. God's not going to send you somewhere where he's not going to meet you at and he's not going to help you at. To uh, Pastor Allen, thank you for your example and your pastoring. To Reverend Rose, thank you for your, your uh, being able. One of the things... 
being a pastor and you leave the church. You want to go somewhere and you want to do something for a long time. I thank God for my wife and my kids because I would go on vacation from Sunday afternoon to Sunday, Saturday night because I was so concerned. But I thank God for sending you that I could walk away and not worry about that. To my sisters, my brothers, cousins, family, nieces, nephews, to my daughter-in-law, to my grandchildren, to my sons, to all of you, thank you in your support of everything that has gone on for these 25 years. You don't know how much you supported me. Just a little encouragement took me along the way. So thank you to my wife. I, she just makes me look good. She makes me look good. And the fact is that she's been that bouncing board. I bounce it off of her. If she can't handle it, she just throws it right back at me. <laughs> and so I'm grateful for her. I'm grateful for her mother and father, her <coughs> sisters, her brother, uh, my brother-in-laws, all of them as well have supported. I cannot tell you that in the midst of this, it was easy, but all things are possible. Amen. All things are possible. Amen through Christ, which loves us. So thank you. God bless you now. I believe, Sister Ruby, is there cake in the back, you said? All right. So they chopped it up already? All right. So there's, a, there's an anniversary cake back there. Get a piece or two or three. You got diabetes? Don't touch it. You got high blood pressure? Just lick a bit, a little bit of the cross there. Do it accordingly. I'm turning it back over to the hands of Reverend Dean. Thank you, Brother Nichols. Thank you, choir. Thank you for all that you've done. God bless you. At this time, our pastor gave us such a word to take in terms of the benediction. Amen. If he blesses a little bit, we have in the back. It's a little bag or something. It's like, take and go. Amen. God bless you. Again, congratulations. Hold on. One second. Members. Offering. Make sure that you come by. Drop your offering in the place at the end of the pastor has given us the benediction. Thank you. You see, God does indeed need your offering. Want the lights to stay on. Amen. God bless you again. Congratulations on 25 years. I pray God speed as you go forward. I've heard several people say 25 more. I love you, son. I don't want 25 more. I pray you don't have to go 25 more. I pray that he'll raise up somebody who will come out. That's right, that's right, that's right. Because while it's been pleasant, yeah. there's a burden. That is right. So I'm grateful. Amen. Grateful to the Pilgrim family listening to this great choir musician. I thank God for you. Amen. Let us go to the Lord. Heavenly Father, in a world that's gone around. Yes. Thank you for a mission. Thank you for the messages. Thank you for your mercy. We ask, Lord God, to continue blessing you upon this first family, upon this church that is open in your name. For these men and women, boys and girls mm. whose life is valuable to you for you gave your only son yes. that we might have the opportunity to turn the life bless us oh God as we go from this place keep us in the perfectness of your peace 
now to you who's able to keep us from falling. Present us faultless before you throne. May your name have dominion and power both now and 